you know, just when we thought we might have a week where things have settled down and we could give Michael Phillips the week off. Nope. 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 The news never rests. And although we typically talk commanders with Michael, uh, it's our pleasure to bring him in now. Of course, now host of MP on the mic. 910 The Fan down in Richmond, but for years, the sports editor of the Richmond Times-Dispatch, and he has done so much reporting on stadiums in Virginia. And yet, Michael, yet, Michael, you've never covered, and the streak shall continue, a stadium getting to Virginia. I've never covered a professional sports team in Virginia. Virginia Squires of the ABA were the last one with Dr. J. Uh, I was mm. not around for that, Craig. No, 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 you, no, you were not. Uh, the closest you have is the squirrels down there. Uh, and they're fighting them, fighting squirrels. But th- that is minor league. No major league teams uh, in the Commonwealth. Ultimately, when you look at this situation, and for those that are just tuning in and have not heard, the Monumental Sports to Potomac Yards deal is dead. Uh, The Washington Post just had far more extensive reporting that uh, they will stay in D.C. It'll be $515 million that the city is giving to keep uh, the teams in D.C. until 2050 at the very least. But, Michael, from the Virginia side of this, where did it go wrong and who deserves the most credit or blame, depending on how you want to look at it? Yeah, Ted Leonsis took the governor at his word, right, that he could get this thing across the finish line. They counted the votes, and when they had their song and dance number in January out of Potomac Yards, if they had taken the vote that day in the Virginia Senate, it would have passed, and, and, and the thing would have been a reality. But what they learned during the process, what they learned was it's not that simple, right? Should have watched their Schoolhouse Rock videos. The, you know, in the Senate, they didn't just take it to a vote. Luis Lucas, the The chairwoman of the committee kept it from being voted on, which was contentious, but ultimately successful. Uh, I I had heard that there were no Richmond based lobbyists that they brought in their team from Northern Virginia. And, you know, there's there's only 90 miles separating us, Craig, but it's a different world. They they trusted the D.C. people to get it across the finish line in Richmond. And they ran into foreign territory that they didn't know what to do with. And that ultimately ended up being one of the reasons this thing went off the rails as quickly as it did and, and ultimately wasn't successful. Now, at the end of the day, you, you say, you know, what did Ted gain here? I, I guess $15 million, right? The D, this D.C.'s original offer was $500 million. It's five fifteen million in the final accounting. He got him to the table, which he had struggled to do before the Virginia offer, but I think we're saying not a whole lot here in the end. Yeah, so uh, we'll come back to that uh, side of it in a moment. But from the Virginia side, if Luis Lucas is not the head of the Senate Finance Committee and there's someone else who lets this thing kind of go through and be debated, do you think it ultimately gets done? Because I I'd also think there's so many hurdles from traffic to you know, the neighborhood possibly rejecting it. Like, there was still a lot of hurdles. Uh, just lo- they underestimated the first one in Luis Lucas. Do you think this would have gotten done with a different person in charge of the Senate Finance Committee? My understanding is if it had come up for a vote, the vote would have been yes. They had, uh, you know, the Republicans were all lined up on board. The Republicans don't have the majority in the state Senate. Uh, but that they had enough votes, they had enough Democrats crossing over from Northern Virginia to make it happen. Now, that that was initially right out of the gate in January. Obviously, there, were, there was a lot of resistance right away, too, to a lot of things that appeared to be maybe underbaked. Um, I, I think that there was a lot of prep work that didn't go into this in terms of understanding what it would take, the personalities they were dealing with. So you say, you know, if, if Luis Lucas weren't there, would it have happened? Well, maybe, because you know, person sitting in that chair might have had their own objections and might have had their own things. I, I think the closest they got was when the governor essentially offered to buy out Luis Lucas. The reporting down here in the Richmond Times Dispatch was that he had offered three hundred million dollars for you know to take toll roads out of Hampton Roads, her region. Uh, she turned down the offer. She said, you know, this is a matter of principle at this point, not a matter of you know, uh, you know, dealing and horse trading and those things. I think at that point, that was kind of the warning sign. And then the reports over the weekend that he was trying to negotiate with Maryland in a last ditch bid, and that that smelled of desperation, right? You know, you don't you don't try to bring a third party into this at the very last minute. That to me said uh, we're getting desperate here. So I this this might be a dangerous question, Michael, but I'm going to ask you anyway. Uh, is you're this fearless, man? Be I, fearless. Well, you're the one who has to answer it, or you could be like, I would like to not get <laughs> fired today. Yay! Um, <laughs> Is this politics not working or is this politics working? And what I mean by that, I'll I'll give you a, I will filibuster to use a political term to let you formulate an answer here. 
I can make yeah. the argument this is politics not working because it doesn't go through the process, yada, yada, yada. I could also make the argument this is politics working because Luis Lucas was like, no, I represent people that I don't think this is beneficial for. And I'm also looking out for the greater region. And I genuinely don't think this is good. The people elected me to act on my judgment. And I'm doing that. And I'm using the power that is beholden or that is given to me. Like, so is this, is this politics working or politics not working? Well, in the sense of every, but nobody wanted this, right? Nobody wanted this to happen. And I'm including Virginians. I, I didn't talk to anybody along the way. Was, you know, oh, I live in Andrew, Alexandria or, oh, you know, I, I live in that area and I'm really excited about this. I, I just, I didn't catch anybody saying, man, I'm really excited about this happening. Uh, and certainly not down here either. I, I didn't sense any excitement in Richmond, like, ooh, there might be a pro sports team in Virginia. Like, I mean, it's like four minutes from the other sports team that we can already go watch anytime we want to watch them. So to me, the system worked. This was something nobody was asking for, and it ended up not happening. Uh, I certainly would, you know, acknowledge everything you just said, which is, you know, that the system did not provide an up or down vote. Uh, in the end, we didn't have a vote that got counted. Uh, you know, probably you need to have a parliamentarian on the show instead of a, a sports guy to, to answer the question whether that's a good form of government or not. Uh, but I think ultimately people wanted them in D.C. and they're going to end up in D.C. So I think it's worth celebrating, you know, even if the process was a little wonky, the, the results, what everybody wanted. Anthony, uh, I see you on your phone over there. Are you looking up parliamentarians? <laughs> you got any parliamentarians in your uh, in your Rolodex? I do not. Okay. You are old <laughs> enough to know what a Rolodex is, right? Yes. Okay, good. Excellent. Uh, Michael Phillips is with us for another uh, two questions here on the Hoffman Show. First question for you, sir, is what does this mean for Ted Leonsis, like legacy-wise? You kind of referenced a little bit earlier of some of the how, how he's played out uh, throughout this process. I saw you tweeting about this a little bit earlier. Um, what do you think this means for Leonsis? Well, it's tricky, right? He w he was booed at the Caps game the other day when they showed him on the TV, and I, I didn't, you know, you would never have expected that. Those are the people who love him. The Wizards people have, have turned on him for the very obvious reason of their team's not any good and hasn't been any good for a while. Like, I, I to we don't have to overthink that. that. That's not complicated at all. But, the, you know, he's delivered a Stanley Cup and Alex Ovechkin to D.C., and it's a great product. Uh, you know, I think that was an indication his public image has taken a real hit, uh, I would argue largely unnecessarily. Uh, the question is, does it bounce back now that we have, quote unquote, the correct outcome? Uh, I don't know. I also think, you know, not to bring the team I cover into this, uh, but we're in a post Dan Snyder world. Um, and you know, Dan Snyder took a lot of heat off a lot of people in this town. Peter Angelos, the learners, Ted Leonsis, uh, that they kind of got to face that music now because everybody's everybody's watching everybody else and, and it's no longer at least he's not that guy because that guy's not in the room anymore. Yeah, no, 100%. And we're going to talk about that as the show goes as well. Uh, last thing, though, is on the football team. What does this mean for the football team? If the basketball team and the hockey team are staying in the district, how does this affect the RFK negotiations, et cetera? Yeah, one of the real complications in getting this offer to the table from D.C.'s perspective was they have limits on how much they can borrow. And they are they are up against that limit. They they reached the limit on Nats Park and then again on Audi Field. Um, and when Ted Leonsis first went to them, they couldn't get to 500 million because it, it wouldn't have been legal for them to borrow that money. If they're going to extend that credit now, uh, their credit cards maxed out again. To to kind of use the analogy here, now that doesn't mean it's impossible. There there are lots of ways to get a deal like this done. And and you know as Virginia taught us, there are lots of ways to structure a deal like this. I also think the commanders are broadly popular in the sense that if you put it up for a vote on an election day, people would vote to bring the commanders back to D.C. in the district. So so I think it'll be a lot easier to get them across the finish line from a public support standpoint. Uh, it's less money available, um, but that RFK land, if, if that RFK land comes available, that's all Josh Harris wants is to develop that and build nice things there and make money every day off of that land. So I I think it still continues to largely trend towards getting done. I also think that that group is, they got a lot of money in that ownership group. Ooh, if they gotta, yes, they do. If they got to pay for some extra stuff and one of these owners that's like more, much more down the list minority ownership, but has 
ten billion dollars wants to become a bigger financier of the stadium and they get to, you know, I don't know, have a wing of the stadium named after them or something, they can figure that out. They don't need our public money. They've got enough. So, you know, they, they want it. They don't yes. need it, but they want it. Of course they do. I want other people's money too. Uh, Michael <laughs> Phillips with us here on the Hoffman Show. Uh, he'll have much more on this tomorrow and the reaction reaction live from Richmond, 10 a.m. to noon. Uh, MP on the mic. You can listen to it on the free Odyssey app. Miguel, muchas gracias for your time on short notice. Have a great rest of your night. Thank you, sir. That is Michael Phillips with us here on the Hoffman Show. Uh, we got a couple calls lined up. Uh, Terrell, Fast Eddie, and uh, you next. 301-230-0980. Whole show, we're blowing out the rundown. Uh, we are reacting to the breaking news. And we also might have a Ted Leonsis, Muriel Bowser press conference or statement at the very least at some point soon. Working on some other folks who cover this. Eric Flack over the next hour and a half. As well, uh, looks like we're going to have Jonathan O'Connell from the Washington Post at 6 o'clock. Uh, so we are loaded up on this breaking news. Monumental, staying in D.C., covered it on The Hoffman Show. What's up, kiddos? It's your boy Clinton Yates from ESPN. It's The Hoffman Show on the Team 9-8. Tell your mama I said what's up.